Now, the National Development Planning Commission is set to launch the Ghana at 100 document to guide the government that wins power from 2021. This document, when approved by Parliament, will hold the ruling government accountable to its development guidelines. On the back of that, my guest in studio uh, is Dr. Kojo ACM Mensa Abrampa, uh, who is the Director General of the National Development Planning Commission. A very good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay. It's a pleasure. So I want us to, first of all, break the issues down, but I want to run by you some of the issues that were raised yeah. uh, with the development plan in the yes. first place, 40-year yes. development plan. Yes. Are we still sticking to 40 years? Because some people said 40 years was too much. <laughs> Let me say that, uh, yes, we are, we are still working in a 40-year perspective. That is the time that Ghana will be 100 years. And that is how we're looking at it in terms of the, in the, in terms of the period. We, we, we already gone around the country. This started some years ago. And uh, there had been an interaction, participation interaction with the people of Ghana, all segments and all faces. And it took a whole stretch of about two years. The National Development Planning Commission worked on this document, got all this data, analyzed it, and then presented it to the president. The president also gave it to a technical team to review it, and then also to be able to include and shape it with the new thinking and the new direction of the country at that pertaining time. This has been done, but this is a very bulky document, and it's more of a technical document speaking to planners, economists, and, and, and the social analysts and, and, and professionals. And therefore, there was the need to, 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 to bring it to a level that could really interface with the citizens of the country. And therefore, the commission, which is made up of 42 prominent people and, and intellectuals selected by uh, our own governance process, chaired by uh, Professor Emeritus Stephen Adair, then summarized this, looked at this whole document, teased out, and, and brought it out to a level that could be relevant to speak to our current situation. And this is the Ghana at 100 document. And that is the name. So the Ghana at 100 document gives a perspective, our direction, our dream, our vision. And what do we anticipate to see at the time that Ghana will be 100 years? What would every citizen of this country expect to see? And that is what has been captured through these views in this document, which will be launched this evening. Okay. Now we know that the parties uh, rule, if you like, they govern with the oh. manifesto. Oh. So where do we reconcile this Ghana at 100 anticipation, the long-term perspective. This is a document which had not been there. We've never done a long-term uh, development plan looking at this whole stretch of, of that long. We can talk about the, 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 the plans of, uh, uh, in the past of the, the seven-year plan of Nkrumah, the seven years first and the second, and, and, and the visions which have been expressed. So you remember, I'm sure if I take you back to history, the Vision 2020, mm -hmm. which was a perspective expressed by, by, the, by the, uh, the President Rawlings at that time, to look at it in terms of the future. Now this document, if you look at it, gave broad facets of areas of emphasis. Okay? In this new document, it's not just indicating the areas, but we've also worked out the details. For instance, we're saying that if we want to really achieve our economic aspirations by the 2000, we've given specific GDP uh, uh, quantum that we must attain at particular periods. We've given certain GDP rates that we should have attained in order to reach that, that, oblig uh, that, that target. Mm. And, and these things have been techn technically worked out. We've been able to outline, if we want to be a developed country, by the time we're 100 years, this should be our energy production. This should be our transportation uh, development. This should be the, 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 the line of agriculture development. If currently we're looking at a situation where we have a, a volume of a GDP, a nominal GDP volume of about uh, 300 billion plus, we expect that by 2025, for instance, we should, we should get in the regime of 600 you know, billion plus. Mm. By the time we are 100, we expect that this should take us to about 3.4 trillion 
So these are perspectives which you've done yeah. in terms of projection. And then if these are the targets, what particular area do we look at? What specific activities do we undertake? Mm. So these are specific things which lies more with the choice of government. So this is a choice of government. This if, is the if, target. If, if you say this is a choice of government because yes. you painstakingly do all these things exactly. as a commission that exactly. you've outlined. Exactly. Now, one would think, why don't the political parties just come to you yeah. and pick from your document? It makes it easier. That way we all know that this is the roadmap that we're following and this is what we achieve if we it, go this way. It is a very good information for political parties, but it is their choice because we provide alternatives. And that is their choice. They look at all these things and say, given our history and what we have been doing, this is the area where we think we can make a choice and then move faster. Again, NDPC advises, and so it is, the whole country. But the government rules, the government determines. But if you look at the makeup of the NDPC, yes. I mean, and, and even if you look at, apart from the current, yes. those who've been there before, yes. these are good brains. These are if, people if, with even different those who are expertise. There. Those even, who are there exactly. Now. 42 so I'm, solid brains. So I'm talking about yes. those who are there now, those yes. who've been there before. Exactly. And I'm thinking that who can better come up with a plan and say, let's follow, than brains like that? Instead of, because what we see now, we see a whole lot of promises. And sometimes it sounds like it just comes out uh, once they're standing on that platform. And it's what the people want to hear in that moment. But in reality, that's something that will not achieve anything. You see, that is, that is the, the trend of development in democracy. You see, it, the whole issue of planning is a political, technical interface. Mm. And this is very important. This person has been elected and is trusted by the people because of what the person has been able to convey and communicate. Once you are elected, that political thinking only becomes an intention. It is my intention to do this. You need to then interrogate it with a technical dimension. For instance, some of the ideas which have been sold by political parties might have to go through technical analysis, assessing their costs and their benefits. That's after they've won. Yes, and that is it. That is it. But the information, in terms of the long term, will always be available, not only for government, but for citizens. And that's why we put it in a document, which can easily be read and understood by citizens. So okay. citizens now will interrogate. If you're presenting a manifesto, if you're presenting any political intention, we interrogate this with the knowledge of what they are thinking in terms of the, the, the long-term perspective. Okay, so let me ask you, the, we, have, we have 12 candidates yeah. now confirmed by the Electoral Commission. Yeah. They all have their visions. Yeah. How much of what they've told us they would do is in this long-term plan? Let me say that the long-term plan is a broad perspective. For instance, if you say, if you take the economy, it is looking at how we can make judicial use of our economic activities, economic resources, to be able to respond and make sure that we have a buoyant economy. Let, let me just read one interesting one, which I have. Uh, this is yet to be launched by my chairman, so let me just make this one. And this is from the promises, uh, this is from the manifestos. No, this is from the long-term plan, okay. for instance. Build an industrialized, inclusive, and resilient economy. This okay. is just one goal from the long-term perspective. And we have with it targets and what specifically we have to do and all those things. But the, 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 the decisions and what has been the intention of these political parties, 12 of them, as you said, might have to then link up. What are they doing economically? What are the alternatives? So we look at it technically. What alternative path do we not need to take in order to reach what we have said as a goal? And then it's up to the political party, if you win, mm -hmm. to then look at the specific strategies which we are going to propose to you. These are the alternatives. Okay. They look at it, they see it in the lens of what they've, the engagement with the public. And they also have their own sense of direction. They tell you, no, this will not work. Can you look at it this way? How did you work the benefits of that? I think the cost dimension is this way because they've gone through the country, they've seen it. Mm. So they bring that dimension, much as we have seen in the lens, the technical lens of NDPC. They've also seen the technical lens 
of their political direction. So the, the bringing the two together, I think, is necessary. If you go just by the technical decisions and all those things about National Development Planning Commission, the National Development Planning Commission might be ruling instead of the elected government of mm. the people. Okay. And therefore, the views and the perspective of the elected government of the people is very important so that the government can buy in this plan. Mm. So when the two come together, then it becomes a document of the people, of the, of the, of the, of the people who are represented in parliament rather than just a document of National Development Planning Commission. Okay. So can I, can I say that yeah. what the parties present to us, and yeah. by the way, we have one independent candidate yes. as part of the 12. Yes. Can I say that what they present by way of the manifesto mm -hmm. is further refined once they win? It's not just further refined. Their intention is good, and that is their intention. But then it goes to what I call, if that is what you term refined, but the whole technical analysis. Once you win as a government, whatever you bring about goes through technical analysis. Because for the country, for us to judge, this is feasible. This mm. is viable. Mm. This one, we can have the resources for it. This one, you won't hang and get stuck at the point because of the resource flow. So we give all these technical advice related to that. Okay. And, and, and then once the government accepts, and the, it, it then moves from a national development planning document to a document of the country. So whatever plan, the medium-term plan, or the coordinated program is prepared, it is a country document. And that is what parliament approves. Okay, so is this easily accessible to the people? Because, you know, even after the win, yeah. we go back to their manifestos and we hold them to what they've said in the manifestos, but that's not what we should be doing. You see, it's, 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 it's two things. The plan is always accessible. If you go to the website of National Development Planning Commission, Parliament, you know all the documents You know how much noise they make with the manifestos and how we're tracking in that now? We, 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 we also do that with the plans. I, I, after the 20, in 2017, I'm sure a lot of people who's, who were looking at this face will remember. <laughs> From June 2017, I told this whole country, led by the Minister for Planning with the technical team, which ran, went around disseminating the, what we call the coordinated program of the government. So mm. this is the vision which has been agreed upon technically, politically, and this is what we went around, institutions upon institutions. I remember we had engagement with the press at the Accra International Conference Center, and these are, these are things that, that uh, we did. So, and it's still there. These documents are not hidden. It's still there. We have copies all over, but that is what we're trying to do, bring it to the level, move it from the technical level to the level that every citizen who can read can understand and appreciate. And this has been a wonderful thing done by these commissioners, to bring it to a level that we can use it to interact and relate. And people can use it to, to, to demand accountability. Mm. That okay. Is. So I guess we have been doing it wrongly then. <laughs> Am I right in saying that? We, we've not been doing it wrongly. We've been doing it, but we need to improve. And that is important. And that is what we are doing. It's not just having a technical document and then putting it on the website mm. and then expect that people will read. No, but putting it in the form that can really engage. Okay. Citizens. So now we're making it much smaller? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that, exactly. and this is to hold the person that wins. Yes. This is, this is a guide. This is what they've said they will do. This exactly. Is consolidated exactly. and so that's our plan exactly so is what we are doing the 40 what we are doing now immediately yeah. in 2021 would be the, the 40. It, it it began at 100 it's a moving th it's not something we started just today we, we're providing the summary but this is a technical document we've been using it to plan it's been one of the basic the, all the information has been there we use it to develop what we call the coordinated program and also the medium term development plan which, which is, is, is a document of the Parliament of Ghana and which is used for, for all these things that we're doing. It is, it, you see, let me give you a case. We hear a lot of things about our development and uh, you know, planting for food and jobs, one, one district, one factory, and all those things. It is not something where just somebody just hit the tie and decided that no, these things should come. No, it's a real thought through process, okay? Which, which was an, in, an intent expressed by the government at that time, let me say the party at that time, taking up, going through the technical assessment, 
and it becomes a basis for, for a lot of the activities which have been expressed in, in the medium term plan. So if you pick the medium term plan, for instance, you you not you not see that political color, but you see a program, a policy direction, which represents the country in agriculture, in industrial development, in education, in 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 in, in water and sanitation, in infrastructure, all these in health. So all these things have been expressed in, in a way that it takes it from just a political intention to a development plan, which has gone through a technical process. The cost benefit weight identified areas of loopholes and tackled, identified areas where we need to face. Sometimes the intention is to do this, you know, the political intention to aggressively pursue this so that people will appreciate. But, but the resources become a challenge. Mm. And therefore, you might need to face it out. All these are technical processes which are negotiated and guided. Okay. So eventually, when we say this is a national plan, it is something which has been accepted by the political uh, perspective, through the political perspective, and it also enhances the technical processes which is taking us to, to our perspective and our vision at, at Ghana when it will be 100 years. Okay, just a curious question. Yes. Did the parties consult the commission when we're drafting their manifestos? Let me say that our documents are there, <laughs> and they do that. They do that. I, I wouldn't say that uh, they don't, because I looked at some of the lines, mm. and I could read you know, some of our documents. Okay, I'm just thinking good. that it would cut the time because they also pick people, put them together to do the manifesto. But, but it's a broad thing. When it comes to the details, mm. we, don't, we don't go into that. Okay. It's your own party strategy. It's what you're selling to the people. But National Development Planning Commission is saying that this is the direction. Okay. Good. All right, great. So when are you going to Parliament then? We, 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 this document will be launched. Eventually, we are going through, we are developing guidelines for the preparation. So we're going to do this whole technical process. And I'm sure it is the next parliament where, which we're going to present. So what it means is that this will not be binding on the next administration? It is, is that it? Once we send it to parliament, it is. Okay, but you're not sending it to parliament now? No, now it's not. Now, now the, this parliament is virtually... Uh, will, will rise. Mm -hmm. So the next parliament is the, the, the parliament that will approve the plan, which will go through their, their, their period. Okay. And that is it. So but the long-term plan, mm -hmm. the long-term plan, it doesn't need a parliamentary approval. Because in our, in our constitution, there are two documents which are laid in front of them. The coordinated program and the medium-term plan. Mm. But the long-term plan is giving expression in the medium-term plan. It's basically detailing the, the long-term plan and the medium-term plan. Mm. So the medium-term plan is what we take to parliament. So when parliament comes, they have three months more or less going through this regime because the plan, we do it in such a way there's an overlap. So the plan that we did in 2018, we have to operate in 2021. So 2022, a new medium-term plan begins. Mm. However, the, the long-term plan, the perspective, is there to guide the process. I hope you get it. Yes, I So do. we have a running medium-term plan, which will end in 2021. And as soon as it ends, the new medium-term plan begins from 2022. Okay. Well, I know that you know, after the launch, the issues will be uh, broken down further on PM Express. Exactly. So exactly. who is invited to the launch? What time? Oh, venue? The, it's, it's, it's a very fantastic thing. This is, this is an, a debate which has been hanging for a long time. <laughs> the, 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 the manifesto vis-a-vis -vis the long-term perspective and development needs of the people. And this will be chaired by the chairman of the National Development Planning Commission, Professor Emeritus uh, Stephen Ade. And the keynote will be delivered by Professor Peter Corte of University of Ghana. Isa is a popular name. Mm -hmm. And there will be two discussants. There will be Professor Joseph Achu Ai. And this was the former Dean of Social Science. I mean, one of the, the, the most written persons. He's, he's uh, you know, published so much on, on political mm. science and planning in this country. And I'm glad he happened to be my professor. <laughs> and, yeah, and with all the experience to bring and discuss this. He's okay. also joined by Dr. Esther Ofea mm. who was the director of a local government uh, 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 institute. 
before she retired and is a member of the Star Ghana Foundation. Uh, Foundation. So this is the, but to be at the African Trade Center. African Trade Center is close to British Council. Mm. And this is the, 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 the tall building there which houses <laughs> Exim Bank and also AFTA. Okay, African, African Continental Free Trade Area. Okay. So, so there are about three of them. But look for the African Trade Center, okay. which has the AFTA and Exim Bank. Cozy hall, very, very cozy hall. The way you describe it, is there a significance, the choice of venue to what oh, you're doing? Yes. These are new directions, <laughs> new institutions which are really pushing us to the new direction. Exim mm. Bank, the name tells you immediately where we're going. And then AFTA. AFTA is the new thin continental thing. The other thing is that we will go by the protocol, mm. COVID protocol. So make sure you have your mask, we'll have sanitizers there. Cozy conference room. Okay. I've been there several times. And then those who cannot join us can also go to a Facebook at NDPC. There'll be a live coverage by Joy, you know, FM, uh, Joy, Joy News. Uh, okay. On yes, television. On television. Mm. Live coverage. So we also send out already uh, invitations to people who can join us through Zoom. Okay. So it's all technology, all presence. And let's come mm. and, and look at what Ghana has for us in terms of 100 years and how this can interface. Mm. with the political discussions and intentions that are going on. Has COVID-19 also pushed the commission to be technological? Oh, compliant? we are. Because we are. you're talking about Facebook, you're talking about Zoom. We are. And we're <laughs> taking the, the, the going with the wind. And, and uh, a lot of our technical people are now working from home. And they're doing wonderful. The outputs have improved drastically. Great. And we, we, we are on prompt in some of these things that we're doing. And, and it's because we're making very good use of technology in our area. And, 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 and our chairman is technology-minded. Professor Day is very, very much technology-minded. Mm. So we're taking, uh, going with the wind, and we know that with the support of, of this plan and uh, what we have experienced, the support from the government, Ministry of Finance, and others, we'll go to the next level. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. We'll wait for it. What time again, did you say? It's 5 p.m. Okay. 5 p.m. So after you close from your offices, your businesses, come to the African Trade Center, and let's have an evening. It's just one and a half hours. One and a half hours of discussion. And this is, this is very near the business area. So just come and let's all join. And, and we're happy join, join, join News will be there to put it live on TV. So even if you're not able to join us on, 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 uh, physically there or on Zoom or on Facebook, Go you still can follow on, on television. Well, thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, my guest, Dr. Kojoe Siam Mensa Abrampa, Director General of the National Development Planning Commission. Now you know, after the win, don't still go back to the manifesto. <laughs> don't still go back to the manifesto. You can go to the plan itself. Uh, but there will be more later this evening on PM Express. Uh, we also have the 2020 Barry Do Memorial Lecture Conversation to have. But we also spend time with the Ghana Bar Association. That conversation is up next.